Would you take your Bibles with me and turn to the book of Matthew, Matthew's Gospel. Matthew's Gospel, um, Jesus, Matthew 28. You know these verses by heart. The last three verses in Matthew's Gospel. Jesus has been to the cross. Uh, he has been resurrected. He is now talking with his disciples, and he's kind of letting them know that he's going to be um, expecting them to step it up a little bit. Let's put it that way, as he goes back to, to, uh, to heaven. Notice, if you will, verse 18 and onward. Jesus came and he spoke to them, and he said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end uh, of the age. Now, notice, if you will, the disciples have still got, not got it all straight yet, but they have been following with Jesus. They've been following him for three and a half years. And he has even sent them out a couple of times to kind of try it a little bit on their own to see how things would do. Sent them out two by two. He's, he's given them, you know, go try it. And they've been somewhat successful and pretty happy about it. But now they're back with Jesus and they're like, okay, you. And Jesus is kind of giving them a little warning. We're going to send you out of the nest pretty soon. I'm going away. You can do this. You can do this in my name. All authority has been given to me. Therefore, you keep it up. Keep it rolling. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. A little funny beginning there. We don't know much about Theophilus, but we do know, and he says, I wrote a former thing to you. We know what that was. That was the book of Luke. So you can basically look at the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke, and the book of Acts, and you can look at those as... Luke book 1 and book 2 is basically what it amounts to, where he talks about, you know, and he gives this same introduction. The gospel story in Luke, Luke says, I looked up, I've researched, and I've gotten the information so that the whole story that you know about Jesus, I can give you a written account. The second book in Acts, he's saying, now let's go from there and let's talk about the things that happened the book of Acts is basically the history book of the early Christian church, the first 30 years. Verse 2, until the day in which he was taken up, after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles when he, whom he had chosen. Notice there also, notice the expression that is used in Matthew chapter 18. They're referred to as, as disciples. Notice here, in Acts chapter 1, they're referred to as apostles. Same people, same guys. When Jesus is there with them and they're just following Jesus around, that's a disciple. When Jesus is gone and he has given them power and authority to be in charge, that's an apostle. Same person, different vantage point. Verse 3, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And he assembled together with them. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you have heard from me. John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Then, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? I chuckle at that a little bit. Notice a couple things Jesus said to them here now. Notice what he said to them. First thing he says now, you wait. I'm going to have a... We're going to have an empowerment ceremony. We're going to have a graduation ceremony. 
We're going to have an anointing ceremony. You wait until then. Now just wait. Notice the first thing he says, wait. We're going to have, and there, what's going to happen? We're going to, he said, you'll know it when it comes. You'll know it when it comes. Until then, you wait. Okay? Notice the way he says that. And they are saying, when he's talking about when this happens, and they are automatically assuming that means, well, that's got to be the second, that's got to be the second coming. That's got to be when he comes. That's got to be when he restores Israel. Have you ever noticed that about us humans? Have you ever dealt with somebody where you couldn't get their mind out of their rut? You know what I mean? Anything you try to say, it's yeah, 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 but, it, but they come back right back to their issue that's on there. Have you ever noticed that about us humans? We get something on our mind. It's hard to get it out, you know? Sometimes a little like if a bird gets cornered in a building, it's hard to get it out. You know? Sometimes in our minds the same way. We get, the disciples keep coming. They can't get past that business of, oh, that's got to be, that's got to be when you're when you've restored the kingdom. No, it isn't. Get your mind off the issue of that and listen to what I'm saying, is what Jesus is saying. Notice, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons. How many times have we seen that? How many times have we seen a good Adventist? Oh, but when's the time when he's coming? And what's the one thing Jesus has told them? Don't worry about that. What, what is it about us, us, us humans? The one thing that we're told, don't worry about that, becomes the thing that becomes the, the focal point of our minds. You know? Um, oh. Kids do that all the time. The worst thing you can say to a kid is, don't do that. Right? What's the first thing on their mind? It is not for you to know times and seasons. But... You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. Now, what's that? Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the world. What's that mean? How does that have any application for us today? What does that matter? You shall be my witnesses. Don't worry about when the kingdom is going to get established. We'll, I'll take care of that. That's my job. But yours is, be my witnesses. Where? Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the other most parts of the world. Anybody of you here have ever been to Jerusalem? Some of you been there? Have you done to Jerusalem? Some of you have. Very good. I have 20 some years ago. Now, when he says, I want you to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the other most parts of the world, should we be thinking and starting from the same vantage point as the disciples? Let me see if I can try it this way. Would it be fair to say that what Jesus was saying to them was, start at home? You shall be my witnesses. Start at home. Does that make sense? Jerusalem... It was a city. Judea, an area, a region. Samaria, a little bit farther out there. And the uttermost parts of the world. Can I, would it be fair to translate to us in today's language? You shall be my witnesses. In Phoenix. In Arizona in the United States and around the world. You know, we've had our youth director just brought some youth young people back. They went on a mission trip to the Philippines. Praise God. It's good to see these young people coming back excited. I believe in mission trips. Should that be the height of our focus? I would say, no. The height of our focus starts where? Start be my witness at home. That's where witnessing starts, home. A couple more verses of Scripture. Turn to the book of Hebrews. Now let me ask you a question about Hebrews before we get going into it too far, before we look at two verses of Scripture in Hebrews. 
One Joey read for us, so that one's no secret. Hebrews 2 and verse 1. Before we look at that, where does Hebrews fit in the Christian discussion? Where does Hebrews fit in the time frame from the other things we've been looking at in our scriptures? And the reason I ask that is, before we look at this verse, I want you to think about something, okay? Jesus, three and a half years of ministry, late 20s, early 30s, first century. Does that make sense? Late 20s, early 30s. Where does Hebrews fit? Well, the answer is, we don't completely know. We can argue that one until the cows come home. In fact, a lot of people talk about the Christian discussion. You want to you create an argument about, among Bible scholars, create an argument, get to the discussion about the book of Hebrews. You're going to have all sorts of arguments. And I'm not worried about any of the arguments. I'll just say this. Basically, Hebrews comes later. Probably somewhere in the range of 30 years later. Okay? Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift. Hmm. Let's go back to that Gospel Commission again in Matthew. Matthew's Gospel. Jesus, the words of Jesus, just before heading back, just before heading into the sunset. Can we say it that way? And you, come on now, I have given you all authority. Go, make disciples. Be my witnesses. At home and abroad to the other areas. Thirty years later, that's all. Thirty years. It looks like there's a discussion of Oh, do we have to, and how much, and oh, do I need to be involved in that, and I, I, don't, I don't have time, and I don't have energy, and why is he taking so long, and what does drift mean? Lest we drift. Question, is the Gospel Commission as alive and valid today as it was in the first century? What do you think? Is it? Is the Gospel Commission as alive and well today as it was in the first century? Now let me be a little bit personal here. I am a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. I hope down to my toes. Okay? Now as such, Adventists do not believe that we are the only Christians. Right? Right? We on the same page here? Okay. Adventists do not believe that we are the only Christians. Adventists do not believe that we are better Christians than some of our other Christian friends. Right? Not claiming it's about us. The Adventist church was not started because the world needed another denomination. The early Adventists were not the least bit interested in being a denomination of any type. They believed it was a movement. They believed it was a movement to get back to the consistency and the message of the Bible from the time period of Jesus. Amen? Are we on the same page here? Okay. Nothing about us or people or anything else is about message. The message of the Bible, about what God is like and God's message, and we make no apology for saying it is our belief that this is the best message out there about what God is like. Are we on the same page? If we didn't believe that, we'd go where it was, wouldn't we? I would hope we would. A couple of interesting things. Um, it's been a few weeks since I've had the privilege of joy of standing in front of this congregation. Actually, it's been five weeks. At two weeks where we had some other things going on, and three weeks we've had these special musical programs. A few things have happened in the last five weeks. Has anybody been paying attention out in our front yard? Is there anything any different in our front yard in the last five, six weeks? Kind of a joy, isn't it, to see the sign work? 
We've only been working on this for a year plus. Started in January of 16. You want to know how to do things wrong as far as dealing with the city of Phoenix. We're experts. <laughs> but that thing is kind of a joy to see it work. And work it has as far as people seeing and hearing and actually checking out from what they saw in that sign. And we pray that there will be many others between now and the second coming of Jesus. Amen? A couple other things that have happened along the way. We'll get back to the sign in a minute. Arizona, uh, Paradise Valley Church is a part of the Arizona Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. And uh, we started talking with conference leadership about things that we have going on and doing, and we asked for some money to help with some sharing the message a little more in our particular part of the world. And we were given $20,000 to do the ministry here in Paradise Valley. They said, we like what you're doing. Here's a little help to be with us. Not bad, huh? Well, we did a little more checking and a little more maneuvering. The Arizona Conference is a part of the Pacific Union of Seventh-day Adventists have banded together. And we did a little talking with them, and the group that is the union leadership liked what's happening here and gave us $65,000 to be about sharing ministry here in the area. Now, does that mean we should just sit on our laurels and say, oh, goody, goody, there, we, we don't, you know, we... Wouldn't that mean we have more responsibility to live up to what was promised on that one? All right, now let me give you the other side of the coin. In asking for those funds, we told them, here's the things that we're doing, and we're putting $71,000 in it of our church money. Okay? Simple as that. Before you get nervous... Fifty thousand of it is the, what we'll talk about here in a minute. But before you get to that fifty thousand of it, the other twenty thousand is stuff that we're already doing. Our vacation Bible schools, our events that we're doing. That's twenty thousand of it right there. There's a thing called Faith, Hope, Love, which is, which is a young adults ministry that we have going on. That's coming out of this church. That's that's doing things. It's in a it's in a young adults meeting in a movie theater and different things going on. The money for that, one of our members is the one that is sponsoring that thing. It comes to about $25,000 a year to make that Faith, Hope, Love project worth. It's already being paid for by one of our members, so we wrote that up as part of our, of, of our $71,000 that we've got involved with. Okay? So that's there. Now there's the other 25000 that sign where everything went wrong and we're trying to be involved with and everything. We said that thing's costing us $25,000 and we're going to pay for it. And that's part of our camp, the things that we're doing on our own to, to make things happen. So you see, I would really appreciate it if you would rally, but that's something we have to do anyway since we have the thing is pay for it, wouldn't you say? And so we've leveraged that twice to help reach the funds for the things that we're doing for what do you think? Faster we get that thing paid for, the faster we can tell the conference and the, we're doing our share of everything that's going with it. Okay? Something else, Adventists. Adventists have basically three big things that down through the last hundred plus years Adventists have done to be involved with sharing the message of Jesus Christ as we understand it. Three things. One is things having to do with health care and, and, and using health issues to be involved with sharing the message. Another one is education. A big part of that is educational things as far as sharing the message. By the way, is health the message? No. It's a way to share the message. Is education the message? No. It's a way to share the message. The third is probably the first, and that is literature. We're big on literature, on sharing literature with people. Is literature the message? No. We would call them right arm of the gospel. That gospel has three right arms in the Adventist church. Funny looking thing, except that's the illustration, the right arm of the gospel. It's those three things. 
this church heavily involved with. We're making plans for next school year, school events. Looks like we're going to have more, more kids to sponsor in our elementary schools than we've ever, and, and the academy than we've ever had before. Are we going to rally to the occasion? Of course we are. How are we involved with three things we're asking of our church people to be involved with? Three things as far as ministries over the next year and a half with the things that are happening and that the conference and the union have trusted us with finances to make it happen. Three things we're going to ask of you, okay? One, we're going to ask you to continue to be faithful financially. Chris, uh, deacons, would you send that, that paper out now? There's a paper I'm going to send to you. They'll, they'll get, it's for you to take home and read. It's a, a letter about the things that are going on, things that are involvement, and, and it explains how the conference uses tithe monies, and it explains how we use local budget monies, and it explains things that are, things that are happening here, and it's from the head deacon as far as things, all these things that are going on and happening. Please, folks, we need our members to remain faithful financially. This group of people has been for decades a very faithful church in its tithes to the Arizona Conference. Amen? Please, we need to continue. We need to continue with our budget issues. And we need to pay off that sign as fast as we can. We'll appreciate your faithfulness in any of those. The second thing that I'm going to say is, and, you know what? We used an expression in filling out our applications for that money. You know what the expression we used? We used the expression, all hands on deck. Meaning, this is an active church with a lot of people busy, give, involved in ministries. What kind of ministries? Women's ministries. That's a ministry. Health ministries, that's a ministry. Um, ministries, 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 ministries. I've got a, one I want to share with you. We already saw Pathways, the thing in, in Phoenix about being involved with that health ministry. That uh, Sunshine, the event there, is basically a copy. The one that started this was what's called Pathways. Pathways was started with R. Leela Lewis. The leaders of the, the ones that started this going into places and doing a massive health care event was begun by people that are members in this church. And it's exciting to say Pathways is coming to Phoenix this winter in December. George, can you get us caught up on what is Pathways and what's it going to do? Pathways is coming to Phoenix uh, Christmas. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Pathway to Health. And uh, Pathways is going to be at Christmas. I hope all of you folks will be uh, available. At Christmas time, what a better way to share Christmas than with giving to others. You know, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And that's what uh, Arizona Sunshine and Pathway are all about, is that we go around the whole country and we put on, what well, we don't put on, the, the Holy Spirit through the volunteers and everyone involved in Pathway, from the top down, the board members, everyone is a volunteer. No one is paid. Everybody's a volunteer in Pathway. And at this time, we're going to see what uh, happened in Pathway Los Angeles and... Uh, Maybe you folks can get an idea. Folks, we had 300,000 square feet at the, at the Los Angeles Convention Center in uh, Los Angeles. We have the opportunity of having 300,000 square feet at the Phoenix Convention Center here in Phoenix, Arizona on Christmas Day, the day after Christmas, and the following day for three days. And we hope that we can all be involved in it. George introduced it because George, one of our elders in our church, is in this local church, is a, is the, what is it, you, are you the, you're not the board chairman, what are, what are you with this thing? Okay, he's the chief operating officer, is, is Leela, who's a member of our church, their daughter, is the founder of this thing and been doing all the organizational stuff of it. Pathways is coming to Phoenix. 
their hometown, our hometown. Of course they wanted it in their hometown to come as well. This thing is about making a lot of noise in the community, helping a lot of people out, but it's going to need a lot of follow-up afterwards with people that come and show up for things. Oh, by the way, and it needs volunteers to help be involved with the activities about it. You'll be hearing more about that. A little commercial on the side. If you know somebody that's a cosmetologist, the laws are tricky on that one. We need local cosmetology people. And what's the other one? Yeah, the barbers and the cosmetologists, right? Right, uh, www.pathwaytohealthvolunteer.org. After that comes General Youth Congress, going to have thousands of young people here pouring into the community, inviting people to do Bible studies and stuff. Who's going to follow all that up? Not a problem. The local church is. We need three things. Remember your church and the ministries in your church financially. Remember your local church and the ministries in it by actively being involved in it. Remember the ministries that are going on in prayer. We probably ought to reverse that, shouldn't we? Remember it in prayer, remember it with active involvement, and remember it with our financial support. Pathways is just one. It just happens to be a very large one with a lot of lead up and a lot of follow up afterwards. Because health is not our ministry. It's an excuse to get to our message of who Jesus is with people, right? Your conference trusts your local church, this local church. Your union trusts this local church. This local church is involved with ministries in this area. Why? Because Jesus said, all authority is given to him, go make disciples. And where? It starts at home. And then a little bit bigger areas. And then a little bit bigger areas. And it encompasses the whole world. Amen? And a little Paradise Valley. By God's grace, our prayer is, because of who Jesus is, we want to be about part of doing our part, don't we? We want to be involved, right? In all these different ministries that are going on. And while we're involved, let's not have drift be part of the discussion in Paradise Valley. Amen? Isn't it neat to be involved with sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the people around us because all authority was given to Jesus for his disciples to share him with anybody and everybody. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, use us faithfully is our prayer because of who Jesus is. Amen.